In this lesson, you will learn how to create additional column types and control materials with global parameters. Revit families have the file extension .rfa, and some of these families are driven from a catalog. The catalog is a text file that contains many family types. This is particularly relevant for steel sections where there are many section sizes available. Materials control the physical appearance of elements in 3D and also control section and elevation views. Materials can have physical properties that are transferred to structural analysis software, such as Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional. Some Revit families default to using instance parameters for materials. It is recommended that you control these instance-based parameters with global parameters. This way you can control and change the materials easier. So you can continue from your original file or you can go ahead and open up Project A. In this video we're going to take a look at adding additional materials to our column and also loading additional columns. Let's first look at the materials. We'll begin by selecting Manage and on the Manage ribbon we'll select Materials. The Material dialog box may be split into two or three parts. You can see here that we can expand this to see library materials as well. Revit ships with a number of materials that are grouped into a number of different folders. So here you can see that we have AEC materials. These are the library materials. In the top portion over here are the materials that are loaded into our current document. You'll notice that we can show or hide the library panel. Also notice that we can search for particular materials. So here I'm going to search for C40 concrete. And you can see that we've now got one of these inside our document. If I select this concrete, you'll notice that over on the right hand side, we have a number of different tabs. So let's begin by taking a look at the identity tab. So you'll see here that we can actually set the name of the material, the description and the class of material. If we wanted other specific fields such as cost, uh, a URL uh, back to the supplier, we could actually fill these in as well. The graphics tab is very important. This controls how our drawings and 3D model appear. So you'll notice at the minute that when the material is cut, we're using this concrete hatch pattern. We'll leave this concrete hatch pattern in place. Also notice here that we could also set a surface pattern. The surface pattern will show when the element is elevated. Typically, this will be used for things like block work and brick work. Let's now go ahead and select the Appearance tab. The Appearance tab controls how the object is rendered. So here, I'm going to select a new appearance. I can do this by selecting Replace this asset button. This will open up the Asset Browser. Again, I have the facility to search. So here, I'm going to type in Concrete. And you'll now see that the materials have been located. You'll see some of the materials have a little orange corner over here. These are the older materials, and then we have a newer set of materials over here. So in this case, I'm going to use Concrete Cast in Place. Now, if I want to use this, I can simply double click it, and you'll see that the material is then passed into the appearance area. And here you will now see it says concrete cast in place. Let's go ahead and close down the assets browser. You can now see how this concrete would appear. Notice here in the material dialog, you can change the various different scenes. So for example, you could render a cube, which might be more appropriate than a wall. Another tab we'll take a look at is the physical tab. So on the physical tab, this contains the actual physical properties of C40 concrete. So of course here you can see that we have a compressive strength of 40 megapascals and we have tensile and yield strength as well. Okay, let's go ahead and select OK to the dialog box. We'll now assign that material to all of our columns. Now if we select one of these columns here, you'll notice that the material is assigned via an instance property. That means that I'd have to assign this material to each of these concrete columns. What I'm going to choose to do here is use a global parameter. So I've got a right mouse click and select all instances visible in the view. That will select all of my concrete columns. So in the properties palette, I'm now going to select this small button here to associate a global parameter. There are no global parameters configured at the minute. So I'm going to select the new global parameter button just here. And now I'm going to type in C40. 
This is going to be a material and we're going to group this under materials and finishes. I'll select OK and click OK again. You'll now see that the material is greyed out and we have a little equals button here to signify that this property is now driven by a global parameter. To set the global parameter, again on the manage ribbon, you'll notice here we have global parameters. Let's select this tool and here I can simply now change my material. To do this, I'm going to click the browse button. That will then take me back into the materials editor and here I can select concrete cast in place C40. We'll go ahead and select OK and OK again and that material is now assigned. To see the material in the project browser, I'll go ahead and open up the 3D view. And if we zoom in, we can now see that material has now been assigned to the column. If I change my visual style from realistic to shaded, then you can see we just simply get this flat gray shading. Okay, let's return now back to the ground floor plan. Next, we're going to load some additional section sizes. So around the bottom left hand corner of the structure, we have some circular hollow sections that we need to place out for columns. To see these locations, I'm going to go ahead and open up the site plan. And you can see in the site plan here, we have a circular hollow section required 355.6 by 12.5. I'll first need to load these sections. If I go to the structure ribbon and select column, and we go ahead and look at the properties palette and the type selector, we'll see here that we do have in fact some circular hollow sections, but none of these are the right size. Remember here we're looking for 355.6 by 12.5. You would also notice though on the context ribbon we have load family and here I can load additional families. Let's go ahead and select load family. In the load family dialog box, if you're not pointing to the correct area, you can navigate to your library by clicking this metric library button here. In my case, you'll notice I've got lots of libraries from different countries and here I'm going to open up UK. We must make sure that we then open up the structural columns folder and then we'll open up steel and in steel we'll open up British standard. And under British Standard, you'll see here we have circular hollow sections column. I'll go ahead and select Open. And you'll now see we have Specify Types dialog box. This is a catalog driven family. So one family contains many different types. And of course in here, I can then go ahead and locate my 355.6 by 12.5. And I'll go ahead and click OK to open that. I'm going to overwrite the existing version and what I'll now find is when I look in my type selector you'll now see I've got that additional section. Let's go ahead and select CHS 355.6 by 12.5. On the context ribbon let's select a tag on placement and on the options bar we'll change the depth to height and here I'm going to take the CHS section all the way up to the third floor. We can then place out our CHS section. Okay, so we can see we've got a number of different positions around the structure. And there's my CHS sections complete. To exit the command, I can select modify or press escape twice. Okay, if I select the 3D view and we zoom out, we can now see that we have the concrete columns and now and the additional steel columns shown here. Once again here I might choose to edit the material that these columns are using. So I'll select the CHS section, right mouse click, select all instances visible in view and you'll see here that we're using the structural material metal steel 5355. Once again I'm going to use a global parameter to control this. So I'll add another parameter in here I'll call this one steel and click OK. Of course, you'll now see that that's greyed out. Again, I can select the manage ribbon, select global parameters. And now here I can browse to a particular type of material. So here I'm going to use 275. 
and you'll notice here that we're using a particular hatch pattern. Uh, I'm going to change this hatch pattern. Uh, this is typical of what we might use in the United States, but in the UK, we'll want to change that. So here you can see that I have a number of different patterns that I can go ahead and use. In this case, I'm going to use this one here, diagonal up 1.5. I'm also going to change the appearance. So if I select the appearance tab, you'll see here that we're using this sort of um, bronze color. I'll select this and I'm going to show the steelwork in blue. You should notice then that this will start to re-render and you can now see that that's shown in that blue color. If I select the graphics tab, here I'm going to change the shading from white to use the same appearance as I've just set here. So you can now see the steelwork will show in this blue color. We'll select OK. And OK again to the global parameter dialog box and you'll now see our new material being displayed. Okay, make sure that you save the file for the next session.